Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to open up March's meeting of the Conservation Commission. Uh, is there anyone here to represent Henry Miller? We have a continued notice of intent to build an 864 square foot single family home from Henry Miller at 12 Plumbush Downs. Uh, it would be my recommendation to the board that we grant a continuance to Mr. Miller to the next meeting. So moved. We'll, we'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a continued notice of intent to raise an existing home and construct a new single family dwelling from Brian and Kelly Kelly at 335th Street. Is there anyone here to represent them? Uh, same for them, it would be my recommendation to the board that we grant that to the April hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a continued notice of intent to increase the height and lot coverage of an existing single family home from Julie Ostrander at 75 Old Point Road. I did hear from her. She is preparing documents and requested a continuance to the April meeting, and that would be my recommendation. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a continued ANRAD to confirm the delineation of wetland resources from the Governor's Academy at 313 Newburyport Turnpike. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Somewhere in the notes, I guess it was. So what, what we decided to do is extend the bank at the same elevation as it left off. Until that sounds we, reasonable. Okay. Yeah, until that's not reasonable. We can run the site visit to confirm the yeah. And then we'll make minor adjustments. We can hold that open on the, uh, in the end red of the tail of that front. If there are some specific flags down there, the, with the numbers. Uh, well, it would be, we want to find out to do the wetland hazards, which would be a Just call it adjacent to 826 to 831. Okay. How come the riverfront area stopped here? Is the project not, yeah, nothing's uh, determined to be down there? Or so, okay. Yep, exactly. And the last bank flag is right here. Okay. So our focus is, is in the area, anyway. this area right here. We don't come in from down here, building, parking area. We just don't know how big the, the expanse of the development is. It's just hard to close the question. Okay. This being the logical first. Any questions? What percent of the Dr. Shea would you want to represent? Uh, this would be that edge outcrop. And then this is concrete. This is gravel. This is a pair of maintenance railings. And then that's a tree line. So there's a particular surrounding with some continuous cross. So we want to do some clearing in order to know where the property is at. It's such a problem. Yeah. Any other questions or concerns? And what's the long-term thinking here? Uh, long-term is is a potential research facility, a, a building, if you will, here with uh, associated parking okay. and infrastructure, water, sewer. Um, I think the, the campus has a sewer connection system. Yeah. 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 
Just to point out. If we can, we'll tie to that. I honestly don't know the date of the validation of the list. Yeah, there's a pump station right in front of the further up in here. Um, right up in here, the pump station. The pump station. And the uh, well, you know, the wastewater pump yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like we want. So we'll probably need to get it around to the other thing, which is common hill, so I would, I would think so. Yeah. yeah. If you can do it. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. I was going to say, that's an awful small block for Yeah. I'll, I'll bet there's a little more underneath there. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know what happens when you stop digging? Right, yeah. You'll probably find more than less. So we're very familiar with the other country. Any other questions or comments from the board? Just, uh, could, maybe, Doug, you could help me out on the non jurisdictional aspect of that. Of oh, that yeah. pocket wetland? It does not hydraulically connect. Have you taken a look at the underlying P acre feet of water, and is that how you disqualified it? Uh, correct. So okay. acre feet, um, as far as the underlying P, I would have to refer to the license report. Um, My guess would be in this out here it would be water recharge, but I just okay. that, that is one of the okay. one of the criteria. Has anybody looked into federal jurisdiction on it? No. Okay. No. Uh, matter of fact, Denny, Dennis Hamill, who's the previous engineer here, he had mentioned a comment regarding um, he thought the term ACO was the one, or ACC, yeah. I think the ACEC. Well, ACEC. Well, ACEC well, AC is area, area critical environmental concern. Um, That's your elevation 10 down there. You call it, you know, area subject to flooding. Correct. Um, to me, ACEC is your, it's actually your three meter. Um, but we do the 10 foot contour down here. That's okay. as good as you're going to get, really, okay. for, for planning purposes. Yeah, he, he seemed to think it meant uh, something Army Corps, but. Well, the, uh, I mean, Army Corps of Engineers, you know, ACE, uh, Army Corps, uh, they, they throw the O in there, ACOE, so. Um, and that, sometimes they're not jurisdictional under the state act, but they are under the federal. Or nothing yeah, your question, I mean, Dan, or do you want sort of to answer it? But you know, it sounds like there's still some question of how it should be treated with mm -hmm. some of the elements. Okay, I, I, I would have to consult <coughs> the gentleman who's got the wetlands. Okay. You know, it looks like it's in a you know low area there within the surrounding terrain. I mean, I don't know if it's just you know flat metal area out there. And Isn't this what you call Murray Road? Out there, yes. Oh, yeah. Isn't Murray this, Road, this, Castle Road. Yeah. Isn't this the corner of Murray Road right here? I believe you're right. So right directly across the street <laughs> is where we just did the um, restoration. Yes. And that was wetland. Was that? So that yes. has no hydrologic connection to that area directly across the street? Uh, according to Morris, it doesn't, no. Okay. Now, he doesn't state that specifically. Exactly, exactly. Um, and it, it appears to me as though the only interruption between that and the one across the street is the, is the man-made roadway. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if there is nothing in here, um, I'm wondering what happens to that when it fills up. Does it just overtop the road? Isolated. I've already got that down. Okay. And then um, I think we're there too. Should we go take our sight walk? I think we should. Yeah. Right. I think we should. I would like to walk those. I, I think the last time you came in, we just had about two feet of snow, so yeah. it was yeah. really not an option. Yeah. Which we got rid of when we got sick, which is bad. Well, so we're yeah. gonna... <laughs> that's all right. We're, we're getting and, it, and it's windering now. It's not going. It's not going to go tomorrow either. 
Um, do you want to set up a time for a site visit now while you're here? Uh, how do you want to? Uh, I guess I would leave it up to your availability. I mean, I can make myself available and if you can be on site. I would like to call on Morris there and have him be there with be us. There with us? Yeah. All right. Um, maybe we'll start an email chain tomorrow and we can, you know, start seeing what, who's available and when. So it appears as though we still have some questions on this plan. Um, I'm hesitant to close the public hearing until we get those questions answered. Yeah, what, what do you got the time sensitivity here? Mm -hmm. Not much. Okay, good. Now we got we have time on this. All right. Yeah. All right. Then let's do it. Yeah. We should be there. Okay. So they'll continue this to the April date. <coughs> Hopefully, before that, we can get out in the field and take a look at these the conditions out there. Great. Okay. <coughs> and hopefully, at that point, we can close it. I'm sure I can handle this out before then. Okay. So, it is my recommendation to the board that we grant a continuance until the April 18th date. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, thank you. Sir. Thank Aye. you. Yes. Take care. Thank you. have a request for a determination of applicability to install a gas line for a generator from the Plum Island Taxpayer Association Hall at 8 Plum Island Turnpike. If you remember co correctly, folks, this was before us last month, but the legal ad came out with Newburyport instead of Newbury um, as, the, uh, as it ran. So, good evening. Did you have an ad for us? Oh, me. Nope. Oh, the guy behind oh, you. Okay. I'm looking well, through you. in the newspaper. What's that? I put it in the newspaper. Okay, did they send you a tear sheet? I get one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we need that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That was the, that was that's the whole reason that this application's back here again this month, right? right. Because I went right back down there and they put it in the newspaper. Okay. They what did you what did you give them for an address for a mailing address? Because usually they send it right to you. They don't uh, they don't ask you if you want a tear sheet. You you've paid for it when you buy the ad, so they usually send it to you. I have no idea. Okay. They, everything was the same, unless they sent it to the hall. Was it in the newspaper? You tell me that. <coughs> All right. that that's your burden. I went back <laughs> nice to sit up here and, and do this I, part. But so. I, went, I went right down there afterwards and okay. went to the newspaper and they put it in. Um, uh, I was down there today. It would be my recommendation to the board that if Mr. Barrett can produce a legal ad that satisfies the requirements of this filing, that we incorporate the minutes of last month into this decision um, and move this forward with, so a, moved. with a negative determination. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So you just want me to get out of I just yeah. want you now. All that you have to do now is supply us with that ad and we'll release the document. All right. Okay? So I'll go back down later on. All right, Ron. See you later. Thank you. <laughs> a request for determination of applicability to demonstrate a system to remove algae and sediment from the town of Newbury at both the Upper Green Pond and Marston's Pond, which is also known as the pond at the landing. Okay. Hey, John. How hey. are you? All right. Come on up, please. Okay. Come on up and have a seat. Thank you. So I'm John Higgins with Higgins Environmental. Oh, you will see. All right. John, this is, we've, we've been through this before, but it's relatively new to us, and okay. certainly the people in the audience, so All right. if you want to start from scratch. Oh, first off, um, do we have a legal ad for that? We do, it's in there already. Okay, we're good. All right, uh, I did bring a little handheld version, too, and just kind of have some handouts here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just kind of talk to this, because it's not all that obvious. 
So essentially what I have is an innovative system to remove uh, algae and, and sediment from water bodies like these two ponds in Newberry. And um, recently I have got two patents on it and uh, kind of related things. And essentially what it does, it's really, okay, and more it's, a, it's really environmentally friendly and uh, Thank you. That's it. It, uh, it's an apparatus that floats in the water and allows me to contain an area let me show you, I should pull it out here. This is like my little station. Did we see this last year? We did see this yeah, last, last year. Last year the year before. Oh, yeah. we have seen uh, it. Yes, but yeah, uh, it's it's as a matter of sure. the RDA for the upper green is still active. I think there's still another year on it. So this really just adds the, the lower pond to this uh, application. All right, so if you look at that diagram, on there you'll see a collection member, which these are. Now these are, this will be so that it'll flow in the water and actually extend down the sediment surface. I can make it as big as I want. The real purpose is just so I can close an area that, that I'm interested in, you know, just so I can focus in on it. I can close it up too, so if I have anything in it, it's all contained. And this is my little lift pump here. Uh, it uses uh, suspended air, actually. It's a pretty efficient system. They use it in like wastewater treatment plants. It's just a very efficient way of moving water, uh, but you can't get much lift on it. Much what lift. do you mean by suspended air? Well, I, I, I inject air. So it gets compressed air. So okay. Yeah, okay. It's, uh, uh, and uh, so it doesn't, I, I can't generate a lot of head. It, it can move a tremendous amount of water, like 1,800 gallons a minute, but I can't move it more than like four inches above the water surface. But I don't need to because all my stuff rests on the water surface. So it just so comes it, up and over the edge. It comes edge up and over the edge. Yeah, right. it comes up the back. So. So that's really the advantage of the patent. And these are my little collection members. Uh, this is my, this is, so the water gets pumped in through here. I can treat it. I actually can regulate, <coughs> like algae has a negative charge. And so I can introduce things that actually suck out negative charged particles. I can introduce like positively charged air bubbles, which is pretty, which is a technique I can use. And, and that lets you cause the, uh, the algae to stick together, float out, or stick to bubbles. Yeah, it's really neat. And, yeah, and, and, and then this collect this would collect the once we dewatered algae off the back, as it would come up as a bubble and float off of the foam. Uh, which I've done before. It looks like shaving cream. How does it get over the white? Uh, well, it's, it's 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 yeah. This is just some little team thing. So this is like a little boat actually. It's a little boat. I have a five by five foot platform. It, this actually has a little, little just a, it's just an inch or two is all it takes. So and it doesn't look exactly like this. This is just kind of yeah. it, it just helps with the face. Okay. It does kind of. <coughs> but what I'm going to be doing one of the two ponds is I'm actually going to use another collection member to set I'm going to do it in strips, <coughs> the pond, or both ponds. So I'm going to put these above about four feet apart, the entire length of the pond, and just move from segment to segment until I'm done. And then when I'm finally totally done with the pond, I may actually just take the, take one of these and just and just run it back through the pond and just clean out Skin that. It yeah, basically put clean stuff behind me as I pull out that final one. So those are those little systems, and uh, um, so essentially what the patent does is allows me to use very efficient technologies that have been proven and used for quite a long time. A lot of the um, technologies in the mining industry actually for taking out minerals and things like that. Uh, they also use it in the uh, 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 recycled paper industry for making inks from paper actually. It's, uh, that's one of the technologies they use to clean out the ink from paper. So it all works on different charges that I can set up. And uh, it uses flocculants, coagulants, and polymers of my choosing. It depends on what the sediment's like and the algae's like. And those are all things that are just designed to make the stuff stick together. And these are all the wastewater treatment plants use these things. The advantage that I have is I'd actually use it in, in, a, in, a, in an isolated area. I wouldn't spread it across the whole pond. It would only be like in front of my unit. Then actually take it out as I'm pulling the solid. So it binds to the solids, it, it collects them, the and it comes out and it flows into this channel, the water comes out yeah. on top, everything yeah. stays there. Yeah. So can these things, uh, these flocculants and this kind of stuff, can this stuff be, the algae that's treated with those things, can it be used for beneficial purposes or does it become material that we have to find a way to get rid of? Well, it depends on what you use. I, I find use a natural substance that's called phagosin, which is actually made from <laughs> so, well, actually, it kind of does stink. It, it, it will, with the algae, it, lists, it actually has a smell to it. It's like, whoa, that's, that's right. You know, so it is, it does, I mean, it is all organic, so. 
you made a comment in your application that um, if it was clean, that it could go right down the outflow. And I realize that outflow is impeded there. In my opinion, it's a good thing it's impeded there. I wouldn't want to see that stuff flash right to the river. So, um, you know, we have a big clamming industry and all that. Some of this algae can be toxic in certain algal blooms. How, how do you determine whether this stuff should go out the discharge or whether it should be collected? Well, you can test for toxicity. The, the sediment, so you're talking Marston's pond now. Yes. Like the upper green pond, there really isn't any place to Well, it's close. It's kind of a closed it's, loop. So I'm, I'm actually going to, on the upper green pond, I'm actually going to focus on trying to remove it all by air flotation. So there really wouldn't be any. Actually, that outflow that is in the northeast corner yeah. um, does go into the drainage system that ends up going sewer? all the way down Parker Street. I believe that drains all the way down Parker Street and comes out. Uh, down across from the field there, the farm. Well, that's field. part of the letter. I mean, if I can get approval to discharge, I mean, I, and I don't have to add polymers and flocculants and things like that. If all I'm doing is disturbing it within my collector area and just pumping it up and over, I just don't have to treat it at all. I just pump it out. The alcohol. Well, if you can show us that it's harmless, we'd certainly entertain it. But if you can't, then we're going to want you to collect it. Well, there's testing. The t there's testing as part of this. It's, it's based for the algae. It's it's like 140 bucks to, to, to test for algae. Um, there is there is some to saying out toxins, uh, basically what they call them, uh, in some types of algae. We can test for that. It is it isn't 140 that I figured. It is part of this algae. Uh, I can test for that. The other bigger part, though, is testing sediment quality. That's 600 bucks. Uh, what is that doing now? Have you been to see the Board of Selectmen yet? No, that could well, get the, the nor'easter canceled. Oh, that's that right. Maybe. You got snowed <laughs> up. Yeah, okay. Fortunately, uh, I was worried it wasn't going to be. Well, I guess some of our decision will, will be hinging on whether they're going to spend money you know, relative to some of this testing. Yeah. Because if they don't want to spend the money, then we're going to end up having to collect it if we don't go through this testing. Yeah, Tracy Blaze contacted me and wanted me to extend the, the demonstration to Marston's Pond. She said she'd cover the, the okay. funds. Okay. And these aren't these are not my cost. These are these are outside costs for me. There's no cost for my farm. I um, no, I understand. Yeah, and that yeah. and that is on here. It, it, it depends on the first thing I have to do. Obviously, is get approval from the Conservation Commission and the Board of Selectmen, which outlines those costs. The second step is to actually take those samples for laboratory analysis because mm -hmm. that's going to tell me. What is, what is it we can do with the material? And what it might cost, if anything? I think we keep that part of it open. Uh, when you return those, you know, whether yeah. we collect it or not can stay open yeah. um, relative to the... Yeah, if the sediment's of bad quality, then we just focus on the algae. Yeah. You know, but that, that, you know, we could talk some more, but, but algae, the cyanobacteria has some toxins in it. Uh, it's, it's evolved to have toxins to keep from being eaten, obviously, is what things do. <laughs> and, uh, and also the toxin, I think, is also it's an adaption, adapt, adapted to um, uh, sequester phosphorus from the water, too. It's not just a toxin, it actually has other purposes, too. But it is a naturally occurring part of cyanobacteria. You know, there is, there is, it does, it is an organic compound, it does degrade. Uh, so we, I think we have to make a decision, to, you know, in terms of how you're going to, if you want to test for that, you come up with the cost, I guess is what I'll do. Exactly. I'll come up with the cost just for that. Then. That's a great For both idea. ponds, so you'll know. Yep. Um, and then we'll, again, we'll know a little more when you'll you know a little more. Yeah. yeah. And it isn't, it isn't always, they don't always produce the toxins, so it's really kind of a complex field. Gotcha. They produce it when they're under stress, either physically or from other agents. One nice thing about my technology, it doesn't, it doesn't actually physically really disturb the algae. It doesn't break them up like some other, like copper sulfates do. That causes and them to lice and they release their toxins. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what, know, is, you know, what is the... It was mine doesn't. That? They just stick to bubbles and they float out. <coughs> and they kind of just like, well, we're not in the water anymore. And what would happen if we introduced those to salt water? Well, they are already. I mean, Marston's Pond and apparently even the Upper Green goes into... Park River, as Marston's does, and I guess Upper Green does. Yeah, Marston's does quite quickly. Yeah, uh, Upper Green. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Upper Green takes a. Green takes a it takes there. a long time, but it takes a pipe yeah. route, so it's yeah. not you know it's not got the yeah. environment breaking it down while it's yeah. sitting down there. You know, these are you know without the dams or the or the roadways or whatever it might be, these are these are substances that would eventually flow out to the ocean. That's how nature is supposed to work. So, and what this does is is doing a controlled manner, and we test it ahead of time. And I can regulate what I use to make that happen. Like with Amesburg, we have another demonstration over there in Clark's Pond, which is a much larger pond. 
a tremendous amount of silt that we're going to be looking at discharging into the, the pylon of the, the back river, which goes right out. Um, but you know, the buds and bunnies, you know, those, these are the kind of things they rely on too, is these organic materials floating downstream. You're so, you know, it helps to keep the clam flats fed with silt and clay and two. So, helps keep our marshes up. It helps to keep the marshes up. It really does. Yeah. Um, any, any questions for Mr. Higgins? Yeah, a couple. Okay. <laughs> Have at it. Um, hypothetically, I realize, but take the upper green, for example. Yeah. What kind of a timeline are we talking to climate? Well, it, it, it may not take forever. I mean, part of what I need to do is optimize how quickly I can make this happen. It's, it's to my advantage to make it happen as quickly as I can to make <coughs> my time is money. I, I mean, yeah. but, to, to actually filter it. Well, to fill 1,800 gallons a minute, I mean, I, I think I actually figured that one, it, it's less than a day for me to filter out that water. The problem there is I also have sediment, and then I got a bag and put it on the stage, and some, someone has to take it. And the board of select one, one of the people in the board of select is going to take it, but that's going to slow me down. That's going to slow me down because it needs to dry out. But I, I could, you know, 1,800 gallons a minute, I could, I could clear out that water, comp that water of algae in less than a day. It seems hard to fathom that you could filter it that quickly. That volume, and I'm thinking volume of material in the water, not the water itself. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you stop moving that water, you're going to start to churn at the bit and bring up more of it. Yeah, no, but the, what the algae the algae floats. Uh, it's uh, what is it? It's a little balloon, basically. That's what they are floating around. Mm -hmm. so. And, you know, and, and you know, what I'd do if I were just doing algae is I would actually, I would sweep the pond and just kind of move it so that I, I right, capture right. it. But you're right, there is still going to be some sediment that comes up. I mean, the sediment, the, the first few inches of that sediment is like, is like smoke. It's so fine and it's mm -hmm. like dead mm -hmm. algae from the previous two years. Mm -hmm. It will come up, but that's, that's just part of what I recover. It doesn't really, it'll have a different charge than the live algae will. Those are things that I have to watch, a different, you know, when algae photosynthesized in certain times of day, it becomes negatively charged, whereas dead algae doesn't. Wouldn't have a charge. Not much of one, no. So those are, that's where the flocculants and coagulants and polymers come in. But I, I can regulate the charge difference. Those are things that I just, you know, they're like proprietary. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to get into until I start doing it. And then I got to tweak it. Yeah, I could, I could be wrong on this, but I'm just wondering, because the pond has been chemically treated, will that have any <coughs> residual of that chemical? Well, the, the, we know what it's been treated with. Uh, you know, that's some of the things I test for. I, I think the aluminum sulfate might have some some influence, but it really shouldn't at all. Uh, it, it may change my my mixture of, if I have to add coagulants or polymers in. That may be all I have mm -hmm. to do. But that's a performance thing. I can see, yeah. you know, if there's improvement in water clarity pretty quickly. I can, I can see what kind of solids I'm recovering out. So it, it's that effective that you can noticeably see oh, it's it. No, it's incredibly effective, and, mm -hmm. and it's used on massive scales, like in the in the in the exploration of mineralogy fields. It's it's frost location is the thing to do, and they're they're able to process huge tailing mark fields with just small amounts of sulfate or copper, or whatever it might be. Uh, Cycle paper industry has pulled ink out of paper. It's it's amazing. So. So that's kind of, and I'm essentially taking that, taking that technology and applying it toward removal of algae in, in, in soft sediments mm -hmm. and ponds. Mm -hmm. And the patent, the patent allows those proven technologies to be used in an efficient manner that otherwise wouldn't be efficient. And if I had to pump that water out, it's not going to be used pumps now. You know, you're going to have to have land-based areas to treat things. It's just a huge pain. Right. So it is having something that I can make as big as I want that floats in the water. That's the, that's what's innovative, and that's where the patent is. And it's it's small; it's, it doesn't really disturb anything. And this would make a relatively good test. I think it would make a very good test pot, and that's that's part of the problem I have. Is you know I can't I knock on people's doors like who are you and you know what are you talking about? And we can't get funding unless it's proved the technology. So there you go. So good for us. Yeah, that's good for you. That's good for me. You know, it's good for me too. Yes, because you have to get it out there. I have to get out there, and I, I have to say, you know, give, the, the, give these folks a call, and you know, you can get my only concern is the is the byproduct that you can collect. <laughs> yeah, 
that would be my uh, my concern. I would agree. And I think that's going to have to be, and, and that's the question. Yeah, that's a to be determined question. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to come out after the testing. Uh, we'll just be flexible about that. Whether we discharge it or whether we collect it all. And I'm very hesitant. I've been around this long enough in the environmental field, and common practice thirty years ago would put you in jail for that. Now what's going to happen tomorrow? That, that's my fear on this. Yeah. Hopefully we can address those concerns. It is it is we're removing mm -hmm. the impact. But yeah, I mean that's man, that's that's a struggle that I live with every day. The regulations change and everything else, but no, it's crazy, you know. And I, it forces me to check every time I do something, even even I, if I think I knew what I was doing. Before, you know, I always have to check because they change, they change things. Absolutely. But um, I don't think that's the case. You know, I think this is a pretty friendly technique versus some of the things that are out there right now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we've seen that in the upper green pond. They added herbicides and alum, and they still have all the algae problems they had before. Yeah, well, you you know, mentioned copper sulfate. Copper sulfate. I mean, I've worked with that stuff. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm very familiar well, with it. Well, it affects The residual fine. there is a little bit low. Yeah, yeah. No, it affects. Whenever you add something, that whenever you add something, right, it affects the environment somehow. And it's usually in ways that we can't ever fully understand, particularly like with sulfate. That the Clean Air Act, Act regulates sulfate nitrate emissions, but under the Clean Water Act, if somebody's funding, we're able to add oh, add so aluminum water. sulfate into our water flux. So when one reg's trying to keep it out, and the other reg's saying it's okay to put it in, or at least that's the default position. Anyway, so. This removes it, and we do test it, uh, so that hopefully will alleviate a lot of your concerns. And it's a small scale too, so it's not like we're going to be like opening the jam up and, you know, woo -hoo. <laughs> Would you have any estimate or guess as to, by volume, how much would you take off? How much? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, for sediment, I have up to 100 cubic yards, and that's kind of a, I think that'll be more than enough for the upper green pond. And I'm not as sure as Marshman's pond. I haven't into it. But we're limited there by regs. If I go beyond that, yeah. If I go beyond that, I need a water quality cert, and I don't want to be doing that. Mm -hmm. I, I, it, although it doesn't apply to taking algae off. That's why I was unsure. That's not dredging or anything. That's why I was unsure what document we were going to use when we first got started. Yeah. Here, so. Well, I actually check, I check myself. I had to check myself. And, and if it's and if it's, it's de minimis too. I mean, core core might be have some interest, which actually may not be a bad thing for me because they'll have some interest, which mm -hmm. could be a good thing. But it's such a de minimis volume. I mean, it's under the radar, 100 cubic yards. It's, it's put in the regs for a reason. If you want interest from the Army Corps, we, yeah. can, we can get that. Well, I think, I think if, particularly once I started kind of getting my legs and the field going, and I feel comfortable with my process, I've optimized it, I definitely want to let people know. <laughs> we, deal with, we deal with the Army Corps and Concord on a regular basis. Right? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So yeah. No, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly where they are. It's a party over there. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, they dream and sperm. <laughs> I didn't mean to bring back memories. Yeah. <laughs> All the good memories. All right. All right. Would anyone here like to speak on this project? Any other questions from the board? Well, I mean, this is still just a demonstration project. It right? is. You, yes. You, did you complete one last summer in the green pond? No, you know, I never did. The pond basically dried up. We never even had any algae. <laughs> this is just basically a carry on what it you is. wanted to do last summer. Yeah, adding sediment in. Adding yeah. another. Adding sediment in, which is mostly geese poo. And Dead algae. So, could supply leaves in it right yeah, now. There'll be so some leaves, yeah. Yeah, at least near the outflow. Mm -hmm. They're pretty heavy at the moment. Well, they're organic. <laughs> they're organic. Um, any other questions or concerns? Any other comments from the audience? I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the only condition would be that we're going to keep the method of disposal open until we hear results from testing and, and get keep everyone informed. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, John. Thank you.
Yes, and we have an event. Oops. This goes with that folder. We have a notice of intent to replace an existing shed from Kevin Fisk at 23 Southern Boulevard. Hello. I need a care sheet from you. Do you have a care sheet? No. No. Do you? Picture of an ad. Okay, picture of an ad might, might work. Somehow I'm going to have you print out a copy of that, though, and supply us with a hot copy so I can add it to the file. Okay. And the other thing that we need is the receipts from your butter mailings. Okay. Do you have those? I do. The receipts. Did well. you do it? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we mail them all out. Okay. The book receipts. Book um, when you took them to the post office, you were to mail those either return receipt or certificate of mailing. So when you took it to the post office, did they give you some type of white register receipt or, or something back to, to show that you had mailed them to a to an address? Probably not. I just want to know if she was mailed them. She may have. Yeah. Um, how can you show that you mailed those? $6.65 for something. Oh, that was to send out the, all the checks and stuff. Oh, to send to DEP? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So that's just DEP's copies. Yeah. All right. Without those certified receipts, we don't have a hearing. Okay. Most likely, I might have to send them out again. Either that or you have to walk around the neighborhood and get, use, you could walk around the neighborhood and get that list if you had uh, an abutter notice or something that you could have your neighbor read and then just sign down the bottom of it. We've accepted that before. That's certainly a, uh, a notification. To mail them. You have to have that acknowledgement some way or another. Okay. That must be the. I, I can't show. Yeah, that's a shed. It's, I, it was going to go bigger, but then I guess I can't because it's already. Um, so I'm just yeah, replacing the existing shed. <laughs> well, in, instead of having um, an open hearing tonight, what I would do is um, because this is a little odd relative to the comments if you want a few minutes to address the board um, just as an other business um, I'm, I'm not going to you know call it a hearing or okay. I'm not going to call it out but certainly if they have any more issues you might as well know about them right now instead of having you wait a month and then coming in and trying to react to it so right right yeah, exactly another question I'd have is we have on the floor plan um, would I have to get if I was just going to put enclosed the deck that I have in the back of the house. Um, so put something up on top of the deck? You no, mean? actually underneath it. Right here. Where I close it. Can you keep it two feet off the ground? Oh yeah. I think it kind and of still give yourself enough headroom so you can come yeah. up two feet off the ground, still have yourself enough storage that exactly. that would work under that deck. That's a footprint you already own, Kevin, so okay. it's not. Um, the other thing that happened is he is over the lot coverage um, when you take a look at his lot and the 20% lot coverage. So that 48 square foot shed, he wanted to enlarge that to 120 square feet or something like that. 128, yeah. 128 square feet. 
Um, he can't do that just by taking this shit out of the picture and putting but, a new one in there. But it only replace he can either size. He can either replace that in kind, or he can find a way to hide part of it or all of it under a footprint he already owns. So those are his, those are his options. Mm -hmm. Now, if I wasn't going to replace that and kind of just redo it, do I need anything for that? Um, define redo. <laughs> Am I going to go down and say, where'd you get the new shed, Kevin, or is it going to be? No, no, it, like I said, it depends on what maybe I do on, on underneath the shed. Putting the window back, um, putting the window back in, scraping it down, reshingle it. There's a window that was taken out. I don't mm -hmm. know when that was taken out. Put the window back in. I mean, you can kind of see it rotted a little bit there. I don't uh, either replacing those or just repainting it. You, just general repairs. You're going to put a window in the door, not an issue. You want to re-roof it, paint it, uh, put some new trim on it, not an issue. Okay. If you've got a couple of, you know, maybe a, a frost board down here that needs replaced, not a problem. If the whole floor is gone and it's yeah. basically a substantial improvement, right. yeah, at that point there, it's kind of tipped over on its head. So basically, I'd need to come back with this if I was just going to get rid of that and put a new one, same size, six yes. by eight. Okay. Um, well, if you were just going to do that, I wouldn't have given you the notice of intent if you were going to replace it in kind. I would have given you a determination. Where you were going larger, you had a bigger impact. Okay. Um, this, this uh, To replace it in kind is, is no impact other than what's there presently. So what would I need to do for that? Yeah, if he, oh yeah, if he puts a new shed there, yeah, you'd have to put it up on blocks. Okay. Um, request for determination, which is a simpler document. So in, if you find that this process was not followed correctly mm -hmm. and you only want to put another 48 square foot shed back, mm -hmm. I would have you file an RDA. Mm -hmm. You don't certify mail your abutters. Um, you do place a legal ad in the paper and then mm -hmm. you come back in here. Um, but it's a much simpler process. It's a three, four page document. Okay. There's no lien on the deed. I mean, this results in a lien on the deed. Um, when you're done, um, you apply for a certificate of compliance. If you did what you said you were going to do, we issue it, right. and then the lien comes off the deed. That's the hold we have. Okay. With the determination, it's just a simple ask. Um, you know, if the activity yeah, that's, that's probably the right order I'd have going then. All right. Um, that's probably the best thing then, is kind of take this back and regroup with it. Okay. And, all right. Perfect. All right, Kevin. All right. Um, if you need some, um, I think that's my copy. If you need some help with that, come on in, and I can, uh, you know, I can give you the right document and okay. you know, point you in the right direction. Beautiful. All right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. We have a request for determination of applicability to, to dismantle a carport and construct an addition from Sam Shulman at 23 Forest Street. Hi, Sam. Yep. Sam Shawman, I'm from Street. I brought this building at True, from True Company. Um, I took it upon myself to dig a foundation and get a foundation put in there, and I didn't think I needed permits for that until Adam tried pulling them, and that's when we came from the bits, yeah. which I knew I screwed up there, but he just got back from vacation. He's about 60 or 70 feet from a resource area that is a cross. His abutter is um, Frames residence, and Frames driveway is in between um, the resource area and this particular project here. Uh, he came in for a sign off on a building permit, and he was within 60 or 70 feet, so we couldn't, the commission couldn't sign off on it. So he's here tonight. Is there anything I was going to ask you that I saw in the pictures? Yeah, the grade's going to change a little bit Yeah, there. but then when I look at the, and there's an additional picture you gave that looks up to the back of the house. Yeah. 
how the heck are you going to do that? Well, so because it doesn't look like you have the uh, right. It is. Uh, it is not quite enough cross. There it is, right there. It doesn't look like you're going to be able to bring this up four feet and cope with it back here. Right. So we we knew we had that problem. So what we did, because the existing foundation was so low, okay, over there. <coughs> Existing foundation so low, we're going to put the TGI joist inside of the foundation. And a little detail, I think it was a little detail. Because we got to put some like cement board or a kick board around the bottom. It can be so the grade can come up higher. So there it is right there. Okay. Because his existing foundation was like four or five inches from the asphalt. So in the end, we're going to recontour the area too a little bit because it's. Mm -hmm. That close, and okay. it's going towards it. It's not really our authority, but just no. a concern because I, I know when the building inspector goes out there, he's going to wonder what your foot Yeah, so we'll basically, we'll cover almost all the way up, and then maybe have that one row of flat block, you know what I mean, above that yep. on the outside. Okay. Um, silt fence? You need to get a little silt fence up so between you and so yeah. so yeah. so You should do that immediately. Don't wait yeah. for, for the order to come in. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Just fence with How, However, you don't have to add heat. If you don't have construction equipment out near your Marafi barrier, if your construction equipment's done, just you know, the chances are, exactly. You don't, don't, you know, you don't have to do both. All we're asking you to do is control your silt. So yeah. um, if there's not a lot of equipment around, you're not gonna run it over. You probably don't need the double protection. Any other? Yeah, you'll you'll Make sure you do it right. Any other questions uh, for Mr. Shulman or concerns? I, I was just, I'm just gonna ask, like this regrading of the area, how much further towards the wetland area is that? Uh, away from it, so on this side over here. <coughs> okay, so yeah. you're going those. Is this even wetland at this point? Well, yeah, it's a good question because I just talked to Steve and uh, he says it's been dry for two years. Chances are it is, yeah. you know, usually drought, if unless it's really extended, it takes about five years to make a change to a wetland yeah. resource area because in Massachusetts it's vegetation. It's funny uh, looking. It looks like it used to be an old creek bed. It, it came right through here. It, did it, used to, it used to be an old creek bed. Yeah. Um, and then they decided uh, some time in the past they were going to make a skating pond out of it. And so they made a real dysfunctional area now that just kind of collects water and breeds mosquitoes. And everybody wished they could get rid of it, but now it's a wetland yeah, resource there's, area. There's so no you're, culvert even under this, is there? Somehow this is going to find its way uh, out here. Somehow this is going to find its way in the Parker River. It's yeah, got to. I don't, I don't know. I don't road. know exactly where it goes right from here, but it's got to find its way out there. Yeah, it gets wetter towards this area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. It does. So you're answering my question about the impacts. Yeah, all the impacts on the side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions or concerns? Are there any butters here? Would anyone like to speak on this project? <clears throat> we'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Once you get that silt so barrier up, give me a call. Um, th this is really, because it's a determination, it, it's really, all you're doing is asking whether that activity is going to remove fill dredge or alta. We found, no, put your silt fence up, and no, it's not going to do that. There's really no other obligation on your part. You don't have to come back before the board. You don't have to ask any other questions. This allows us now to sign off on your building permit, and I'll probably take a drive down there someday when I'm in the neighborhood. There's a 10 day appeals period and it starts the day after the postmark on the envelope that you receive this in. Um, in this case here, we'll have you pick it up. It'll be here at Town Hall, but we'll put an, an end date on it. If it's important that you get going and you get moving on this project again and you don't want to wait the two days, as long as you issue a letter to the Conservation Commission saying that you acknowledge that you're working at risk, um, you can continue at risk with this negative determination. I'll leave that up to you guys. Yes, please. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Right. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you.
have a request for a certificate of compliance from Arthur Allen at 65 Plum Island Turnpike, DEP file number 50-896. It is a real old one. Um, we got a, a letter from the engineer, as required, and we got an as-built from the engineer. And I've been driving by this project, and as I looked at the as-built and remember driving by the project, I thought, that driveway isn't what we permitted. Um, yet the, the as-built picked it up as we permitted it. So I went down there today, and uh, this, I don't know if you guys can all see this, but this is, this is what I found. So originally this was proposed as driveway, all this, the red hatched area and this area over here without this. He finished the project. He paved it according to the documents. He had his engineer go down there and do an as-built. And then he and the homeowner decided they didn't like the configuration, so they were going to change it. Um, so it took me a while to figure all that mess out. What he's done is he's cut this off, and he's taken this completely away, and he's added a 20 by 20 over here. So he's really given back more than he's taken. There's a net gain on the, on the side of the Conservation Commission here. Um, so in spite of all this, uh, they've done a great job on everything else, and it would be my, uh, I find them to be in substantial compliance. Um, they are going to uh, send the commission an updated um, as built plan, and it would be my recommendation that we grant the certificate of compliance. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> By the way, one thing I left out on that, that is going to be a partial certificate of compliance. There is no vegetation on that lot yet. Um, so the new owner has agreed that they want to do the vegetation themselves. So we're giving Arthur a partial on the pavement, the structure, and the retaining wall. Um, the rest of that order is going to remain open, just so you know. I forgot to, forgot to tell you that. Oh yeah, do you want that back? Mm -hmm. yeah, I want to get rid of it, I suppose, before I mix all my stuff into it. So. We have a request for a reissuance of an order of conditions DEP file number 50-1147 from Sharon Bresnahan at 31 Annapolis Way. It's a reissuance of an existing order that I don't, it never got recorded. Yeah, is it? Not recorded. Okay, it, it never got recorded and it's lost, Jim, so it's just a replacement.
you show up after I pass those out? No, I didn't get any. Okay. Of those. Good evening, Hawkins. Hey, how are you? Hi. How are you? Hey. Hey. We have a request for a minor modification to existing um, notice of intent. Actually, I should say order of conditions um, from the Hoffmans at 21 Marsh Ave. Yeah, thanks for adding us onto the agenda here. Um, we're doing some home improvements, and last year um, we have an order of conditions that has been recorded for adding on some decks and knocking down an existing addition and replacing it. Um, and we didn't think we were going to be using an architect, but we ended up getting an architect. And they put together the drawings for it. And at the end of the day, there were um, some minor changes that we wanted to run by you because um, they are different than what was shown on our sign that was recorded. So um, one of them is for an open deck that is on uh, the northeast corner of the house. So this area pink or salmon yeah, or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Exactly. Um, so that is That's an addition. That is an addition to um, yeah, the deck that was approved. So the brown deck actually that was approved. And uh, he wants to make it about a foot and a lot a foot and a half wider um, to tie in directly to the addition that is um, that's on the deck, which is in red. And also there was no way to get off of all these porches and so he recommended and we agreed that you could probably have stairs instead of only having access to the house. So there are stairs and um, a slightly increased footprint. Um, and now the, we had calculated you know, an estimated number of high ranger post, posts that would be needed to hold up the deck as sort of our square feet of impact um, to the yard around there. And um, we don't anticipate that that actually is increasing our footprint because some areas are not going to be cantilevered. So that actually, while it has a bigger footprint, it doesn't have any increase of impact to the ground. That makes sense. I understand. And then when we were going to um, demolish and rebuild the office, we actually bumped that out a foot and a half. Um, in so one this gray? Yes. Oh, the red. The red. It's the, the red. red next okay. to the gray. So the gray gotcha. was all approved, and he wanted to go a foot and a half out, or we wanted to go a foot and a half out. Um, and then it's about three feet towards the driveway as well. So the, um, the river is feet, if you were to pull away from the river. So that addition got expanded. And then um, on the front of the house, we were just going to have open farmer's porches, and that's what was approved in the order of conditions. And we've actually reversed that to, there's actually a sort of a mudroom here now, and instead we're going to knock down that mudroom and make the whole farmer's porch be enclosed in front of the house. So there's no footprint change. So the footprint. Um, there's no footprint change to this area right here because this was wraparound porch before. Right? It was wraparound porch. All right. Yes. Farmers porch. Yes. Okay. We might have gotten a little bit dirty. Um, I think that yeah, we had only gone out previously to the same width as the existing porches now, and we're going out. Further. Oh, okay. All right. So that three foot six is additional. Yep. Yes. Okay. So at the end, it comes out to about 196 square feet. You know, that addition is more addition to the city, um, more impact to the farm that was built. What do you think, Boyd? Any comments or questions? Say 196. Given the lot and the amount of riverfront they have on the lot, they're not close to the 10 percent, um, four or five thousand square feet, and it's, it has no impact on any other resource area. So it is riverfront area that we're talking about, the um, expanded area. What's the 196 feet as a percent increase? Did you say what was the original base for the area? Sure, so the um, previous impact to the riverfront area, now we're at about 600 square feet, 602 yeah. take, square feet. Take that, look at the second page of the narrative. There you go, that might help you. 
we're now at 602 square feet of impact for the riverfront area and our um, previous order of conditions provide maybe so I guess that would be somewhere in the 400 range um, because we went up so 196 to less it's now 196 added yeah yep. right. exactly yeah 196 less was what well, was approved yes yeah. Existing lawn, you know, that's what's all around here. There's a nice beach that is that we cannot use as of now. Does anyone have a problem with accepting the new plan as plan on file and uh, placing it, stamping it, and putting it on record? Um, or does the board think that process, more process is um, warranted? stamp it and place it on file as the yeah. new plan of record. Right, okay. I, I, I would agree with that because it's very little work done. In fact, about 184 feet, yes, that's nothing. And she's talking, some of it is cantilevered, so it's not going to touch the ground either. Okay, I agree. I'll second that. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 There we go. Right. We're good. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Is it? I will entertain a motion to Ben. Do you have any comments? Or? No. Uh, definitely get this out of the testing on the aeration of the. Do you have any experience with it? Just it, I. The sediments are going to be more worrisome than the algae. You know, you know, there's just been collecting stuff coming off the road, and you guys have been putting metal in there. So. Just get the sediment tested so to make sure they get the spores yeah, properly. Yeah, I think that the Newbury Green is probably something that we're going to collect dry and dispose That's of. That's what it sounded like. The, the Marston Pond, uh, you know, we're going to have, I don't believe it's ever been treated. Uh, my guess is that there's some really aging septic systems down in that neck of the neighborhood, and it may be getting some nutrients that it doesn't need. Um, so I'm worried about the metals and stuff like that, yeah. you know, so yeah, then you just want to, before it, I don't, it doesn't, Sound like they'll suspend a ton of sediments, but it's possible. So it's just a matter of making sure you don't put that. Yeah, in. he's got to keep it below 100 cubic yards, or he hits a threshold that sends him to a, a, a much different right. level of, of um, application. So yeah, all right. That was a long you know, thing. Along those lines, I was also thinking, how are you going to get a good representative sample? Spores. Yeah, you know, could miss something yeah. if you tested it. Yeah, you're right. When you little grab a sample, you can always you can always miss on a grab sample. Not exactly yeah. a huge body of water though. Yeah. Yeah, so you do two haven't you get two separate cores from different sides of the different, pond? Different ends. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So no, that's the thing is that chances are anything that's in that pond is in the river already. So it's just a matter of how much, like what the concentration is. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, with that Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 